get started here, we're going to tie a squirmy worm. This is a fly that we used for or we use for your own thing. Um, you can use it for other stuff too. You can probably fish it under a bobber, chuck and duck, or um, we use it quite a bit for your own thing though, and it's super effective. So this is the material, super rubbery, really flexible, moves like crazy. You can kind of see it there. The material is called Castor Squamito. I get this from quite a few different fly shops. Um, most places carry it. If you, can't look, if you can't find it, look online. It's pretty simple to find. So what we'll do is take one strand and I'm going to cut this in half. And what that'll do is give us two worms or two flies. If you want to call it a fly, some people don't call us a fly. Check your rags wherever you're fishing this thing because you could get in trouble. So we've got two different strands here. Those are each going to be their own fly. I put this on a size 12 jig hook. And this one particularly is a pink worm that we're going to tie with a silver bead. You can't see it here, but what I'm going to do is um, put the bead on opposite. So we're going to put the bigger end on first so that we have an opening at the front of the fly, which I'll explain as we're tying this, that allows the, the front of the worm to sneak through there. This is kind of a two-step process. Again, though, it's super quick. So, got our bead on, it's on reverse. So the bigger open slotted end is actually pointing this way. It's to the front of the, by the eye. So we'll leave that back for now. This one I'll tie with red thread. You can use whatever thread you want. Uh, most of the thread won't show through, but if you want a little hot spot of red or orange, yellow, ton of different colors, whatever you want. I tie a variety of them. I've got quite a few different colors with different uh, worms different colored beads, different colored threads. Pretty basic, pretty simple. So here we go. Um, what we'll do first is we're gonna build a little bit of a base at the head of this thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get started here and we'll build a quick little base up front. That's probably enough, just enough to get, to hold the squirming material. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna take this squirming material and we're gonna go, you can go 50-50 on it. I don't know why you can see this, but um, but the one piece or one strand that you have, you can go halfway. Um, you can back it off a little bit if you want, like 60-40, 50-50, whatever, it doesn't matter, it's your call. Um, this is not my tie, this is somebody else's tie. I saw it online and it was a good trick. I was cutting this material a bunch when I was tying this where I would tighten the thread down and it would cut the material and this guy did a thing where he kind of put some tension on it, pulled it down and works really well. So I'm going to show you that here. This is probably the biggest part of this whole thing. So put your material um, under, the, put your thread over the material. So now you can see there's some, some flex here. Hopefully you can see that okay on there. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to put some tension on that squirming material by pulling down with the thread now. So I'm going to pull down, put enough tension on there without cutting it. And then I'm going to make like four or five wraps in front without putting a bunch of pressure on there. And then I'm gonna do four or five in the back, which is plenty. And then now you're good here. You can, you can tighten the back of this down a little bit if you want, but you don't have to, I do. And then you cut this off. So part one's done, we're almost done with this fly. So once we, once we put a few more thread wraps on there, we can go ahead and finish this off and then we're gonna slide the bead up. I do this twice just for security reasons. You can glue it, some guys glue it, I don't. This seems to hold fine. So I'll tighten that off, cut the thread, and this is where we're gonna move the bead up now. This is why the bigger end is in the front. So we're gonna slide this up against the squirming material, and I might actually have a little bit too much thread on here, but we'll push this guy up as far as we can against that squirming material, and that slotted part maintains, or the slotted part holds the squirming material in, that, in the opening of the, the bead. So that'll stay there. We will put more thread on is a base here what I'll do sometimes too is I'll go up against the bead to push it up and, and create kind of a base against that bead so it doesn't slide back so a little bit of a base there let's go to the back we'll tie the second half of our worm in and we are almost finished I've got the second part of the worm this is the piece that we cut off what I'll do is go ahead and tie this in and I just, I leave about the length of the fly, maybe a little bit shorter. 
than the entire fly to tie this part in. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to loop it over one time, lift up, so you can see we've got it kind of uh, elevating there. So there's no pressure on that squirm material. I'm going to put a little enough tension to hold it. I'm not going to pull up on this real hard. And then I'm just going to go around four or five times. Front, back, and then we'll take this back up to the front. So Now, last part that's kind of critical. When we tie this in, it pulls the worm to the left. Or depending on what you're looking at, it pulls it this way because the, the wrap's going that way, so it wants to pull that material and turn it. So instead of wrapping your worm, which I did this for the longest time, instead of wrapping it the same way you're wrapping the thread, wrap it the opposite direction. What that does is it will pull against the natural pressure of the thread and it'll straighten out that, that back part of the worm. What I was seeing is I would tie these in and my tail would be completely in the opposite It'd be way over on the far side because there was so much pressure with the thread pulling on it. So what we'll do is just wind this up. You go as far as you want. I usually, I mean, this is good enough already. Bring our thread. We're going to go over it. I usually do like three times here, behind it. I'll do three in front. Three in back, three more in front. And that's usually good. Cut this last piece off. To finish it, I take a little bit of dubbing. This is just an ice dub. This is UV pink. Um, this is just to finish it off with a little bit of a hot spot. Um, again, a bunch of different colors. Whatever your this is this one's been great for us. Um, so whatever you're you know you're kind of to make a bunch of different colors and, and time up. Never know what's going to be good. So we're going to go ahead and put that on the thread, and we're going to tie this guy in and whip finish it. Again, I usually do two just to make sure. And that's it. Here's a squirm arm. Again, if I were just tying this, it literally takes two minutes to tie. This is a super quick one. Um, size 12, 3.8 bead. Again, this one's been really good. This uh, pink with the silver bead and that um, pink ice stub. This one's actually been pretty good. So, anyways. Uh, quick, easy, fast. Uh, if you see them tied different ways, comment below. I'm curious to see, you know, kind of other people are tying these. I'd like to see other bugs and the way they're done. Um, again, this guy, the guy I saw do this one. I didn't come up with this. Some other guy did. And I saw how he was tying the, the squirming material and without breaking it and tearing it. And it was really effective. So it's, it's worked well for me. And yeah, that's it. So there you go. Squirming worm.